I know there are graduation parties. I think there's one here. I know there's one in Odin. There's probably others. Uh, some of our attendees today have reached milestones recently. We haven't recognized you officially yet. I don't think we're prepared to do that today. At least I didn't get the cards, but uh, we, we congratulate you on what you've done. We will recognize you officially here in a week or so, hopefully. Next week's uh, Memorial Day weekend, so I don't know if that puts people on travel or not away, but hopefully we can gather some of the college graduates and high school graduates and recognize you soon on your achievement. So I, I won't try to keep you very long today, I don't think, uh, because I know you got places to go. Uh, we will meet back here tonight if Christy didn't tell you, and uh, the evening services aren't really well attended. I think last Wednesday night we had like 14, she told me. I guess 10, she said 14. I must have had four people hiding out on me. But, but uh, if you can come back and be with us on uh, the evening services, I know the gas prices are forbidding. I know it's uh, just uh, ex tremendously expensive to fill your car up. And if you have multiple cars, isn't that amazing to do that? Uh, some of you do. I know you do. So, uh, What did Jesus think about children is our, uh, where I want to focus today. I think sometimes people think I overdo this. We have... Routinely, we have uh, baby dedications. We had one Easter, I believe, here, a very special baby dedication. They're all very special. But, uh, that little boy's life was in jeopardy from the beginning, and he's, he's just incredible how he's progressing. But uh, I'm not going to apologize because I feel like this presses so much on my heart about what Jesus thinks of children. And I believe the Word of God makes it clear and I usually uh, use the text out of Mark 10. There's only four verses. And uh, I think it shows us very clearly. There's some companion passages. One's in Mark and one's in Luke. Doesn't give us as, quite as much as information as it does in uh, Mark about the incident. But um, in Mark chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, They brought children to him. Now, one of the past parallel passages says infants, that he should touch them. And the Matthew says that he might, I think, uh, pray. Uh, it is, uh, I've got it in my notes somewhere, but let me just go to Matthew 19 real quick because I don't recall exactly. But it is to uh, also pray in verse 13 of Matthew 19, and they were that. Then were there brought unto him little children, it says little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. I think in the other passages he just talks about touching them, but here it mixes, Matthew mixes the laying on of hands with prayer. And then it says the disciples rebuked them. So we'll go back to Mark 10, 13. They brought children to him. They didn't send them, they brought them. They're little enough they have to be brought that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. And when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. And verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter into it. And then this great picture of Jesus, we see in, in the 16th verse, it says, He took them up in His arms, and He put His hands on them, and He blessed them. That is, He prayed for them. He prayed uh, the blessing of His Father over their lives. What a moment. What a moment. So I just routinely, usually routinely go through this. I'm going to take a little bit more time today than I normally do. We're, the whole service is, you know, this is like family day. We're celebrating an addition to a family. We're celebrating a baby, uh, a little boy this time. His name is Cooper. His name is Cooper Dane. And uh, I'm really excited about, uh, about this uh, opportunity to have this dedication. Uh, parents, uh, get your children to Jesus. It says they brought... Their children to Jesus. You'll get your kids a lot of places in life. Nothing will ever rival you getting them to.
to Jesus. What am I saying? Nothing is more important in life than you getting your kids to Jesus. I want to hear an amen, amen in the house. Somebody can surely say amen. And what they found out was, I don't know how, uh, I, I don't know what their mind, what, the, what they thought, but I, I, I'm pretty sure they, they thought Jesus would welcome their children, but maybe they're not sure, but they risk it. They risk taking their kids to Jesus, maybe not fully persuaded in their mind, but hoping that Jesus would be accepting of their kids. And what they found out is that Jesus couldn't have been more welcoming of their children. He wanted them. He welcomed them. He loved them. He held them. He blessed them. Children matter to Jesus. You can't read these passages and not understand that they do. They, they really matter to Him. He put His hands on them. Jesus, the one, you know, His itinerant ministry, pretty busy. I mean, he, he was pressed a lot of times. Sometimes He had to just kind of retreat to get some rest. And he invited his disciples as well to come apart and rest a while because it was pretty taxing his ministry for three, three and a half years. But he took time for the kids. He took time to hug and to hold children. He welcomed them. He included them. He valued them. He absorbed, uh, uh, ascribed rather uh, importance and significance to each life. Now, obviously, the disciples didn't see it the way Jesus saw it. They rebuked those that brought the children. They were thought they were do, doing Jesus a service, but they were so wrong. They, were, uh, they thought the children were a bother. They thought the children were a nuisance. Not nearly as important as uh, they and the other adults were, by the way. Boy, that's pride, isn't it? They presumed Jesus was more interested in the adults than children. They were wrong on all the counts. And Jesus made sure to tell them, don't ever interfere with a child coming to me. Never interfere. Don't let them not be able to get to me. The disciples thought Jesus would uh, not want to be inconvenienced by the children. And, uh, but they were wrong. The children were being brought for blessing and prayer. And their efforts to protect Jesus from what was happening with the parents and grandparents perhaps. Maybe aunts and uncles bringing little ones to Jesus. Uh, it brought intense displeasure to the Lord. And so they misunderstood the heart of Jesus. And we never want to misunderstand the heart of Jesus concerning these little ones. They were misguided in their rebuke of those bringing children. They thought the parents were being intrusive into the life of Jesus. The Lord had greater matters to attend than to hold and bless kids. But they were wrong. They had it all wrong. Jesus elevates the importance of children when they thought they were unimportant. Jesus shows great value and importance to every child. And so He brought uh, blessing and prayer to the life of each child that was brought. And I believe that little ones can benefit from blessing. Some people actually think that, well, a child's got to be old enough to understand blessing. No, the blessing of God can be imparted on these little ones, and they, it necessarily needs to be done. And so I always invite parents, make sure you're praying for your kids. You can invoke the blessing of God over your children. In fact, I don't think it's something any child should ever outgrow. My kids are adults, but I still pray over them, and I pray the blessing. i got grandkids to pray for now, but I'm still praying for my kids. My dad, up until the time he took his last breath uh, on December 11th, every day he prayed for his kids by name. He prayed for his grandkids by name. He prayed for us. It's a good thing to pray over your families. Take responsibility to do it. Jesus released powerful blessings upon and over the children that day. How many believe there can be powerful blessings when they come from Jesus over your life? Life-changing blessing and favor don't hinder them from coming. And Jesus uh, probably should help us a little bit. I don't think we really have adequate understanding about the power of, the potential of, let me say, the, the potential of blessing, asking for the hand of the Lord to be upon someone's life, what could be more important? 
Jesus uh, makes these incredible statements about the value and significance of every child. And it is a great mental picture for all of us to imagine Jesus with a child in His arms and His hand extended to the child's head praying, invoking, inviting the grace of God, the blessing of God. Jesus holding babies, little children. Yeah. And these parents, they desperately wanted the Messiah to touch their kids. And so they brought them and they got them to Jesus. And Jesus held them and he prayed over them. I think each and every one that was brought, he prayed over them. He took time for them all. And I want to say that all children need the touch of Jesus. And parents, if you care about the future of your kids, if you care about the present tense, the present life of your children, you'll pray for them and you will invoke the blessing of God over their life. They wanted their kids to know God. They wanted their kids to know Jesus. So I invite you today to pray for your children. In fact, I, I, I challenge you to pray for your children in every way. And uh, just pray regularly, routinely. Pray for the hand of God's blessing to be upon them. If you've never done it, it may feel awkward. I don't know if you've ever prayed over your child, you know, while they're awake. Maybe you just wait till they slip off to pray for them. But if, I mean, them knowing it, if they've never known you to pray for them, I challenge you to do something that may be a little awkward, but get out of your comfort zone and say, uh, and I know, Bart, you've prayed for your boys and prayed for your kids. I, I know you have, but you could say, I'll just use Bart for an example. Jeremiah, it's been a while since I prayed God's blessing over you. You may see him this week. And uh, you say, son, would you mind if I prayed for you? And you can just ask, and he can say yes or no. And you can pray for him whether he wants you to or not. But I'm pretty sure he's going to say yes. And I remember one time when uh, uh, my dad was praying for me, and I remember he just kind of had a hold of my arms or hands. And I remember while in the course of his prayer, I just grabbed his right hand and I pulled his right hand up and put it on my head. I remember that. I don't know why I did it. Uh, I, nobody coached me to do it other than the, just the Holy Spirit kind of whispered to do that. I don't know how awkward that made my dad feel, but my, I can still kind of sense the presence of my dad's hand on my head. Pray for your kids. Pray and ask for God's blessing and pray for God to give you an understanding of blessing, a greater understanding maybe than you've ever had because there's power and potential in blessing. Because we're, all we're doing is we're asking for God to show up in the life of our children. You say, I don't know whether I can do that or not. I don't know if I want to do that or not. Well, grapple with it a little bit. I'm pretty sure the Holy Spirit's going to impress you to forward uh, to do that very thing. A baby dedication or a child dedication is a ceremony in which Christian parents make a commitment before the Lord and the church to submit their child to God's will and raise their child to, uh, according to God's uh, word, and His ways. So today, uh, parents are promising uh, to raise their uh, baby in a godly way, if that makes sense. To provide an example of godliness. And then to pray consistently uh, for Cooper. And to teach and train him from the Word of God. And it's really going to be important because this world now is trying to teach children otherwise. So you're going to have to take responsibility to teach the Word of God in your home. You can't depend on anybody else to do it. You've got to take responsibility to teach them the clear uh, understandings, the wisdom, the knowledge, and so forth from the Word, the truth from God's Word. And you've got to recognize, I think in dedication, you recognize your responsibility for the greatest of treasures. And uh, I, don't, I don't need to... I don't need to talk uh, to Cooper's parents today about his value because I can see, I can see it and I, I know what I can, I can tell that, uh, well, he just has worth beyond measure, unmeasurable worth. Cooper's like all the little ones, priceless, say priceless. priceless. Yeah, 
There's no, you know, the, the true treasures in life are these little ones. And so there were brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And Jesus shows us how important little ones are because he took time to do that very thing. Not an interruption. Not unnecessary. The disciples sort of tried to censure the action of the parents or grandparents, express their uh, severe disapproval. Understand, you're going to meet with opposition along the way as you try to parent uh, these parents trying to get their kids to Jesus were scolded. They were rebuked. Uh, they were sternly condemned that uh, they were bringing their little ones to interrupt the ministry of Jesus. They were harshly critical. That's what you see. In the, they, they gave a sharp reprimand to those parents that brought, what, are you, what do you think you're doing? And you may meet up with that in your role of trying to lead your kids in the right direction because this world is going in the wrong direction. So you're apt to meet up with people that think you're crazy, that you've, you're a fanatic to, to put such a high priority on having your kids in the presence of Jesus. But there's nothing more important than getting your kids into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus, uh, He disapproved of His disciples that day. Those that thought they knew what was going on didn't know what was going on. And Jesus shows strong disapproval. He, it says He was much displeased. Uh, that means, uh, some of the newer translations says it, says it a little clearer. It says, moved with indignation. That's anger. And of course, we know Jesus never sinned, so it had to be righteous anger. You want a picture of righteous anger, here's one place where you see it. You see it in other places, like when he cleansed the temple, kind of out of character for Jesus, turning over tables, making a whip, turning, you know, <laughs> turning things upside down, really running people off, saying you've made this place that's called, supposed to be a house of prayer into a den of thieves. Well, he got upset that day too. And his anger was aroused by wrong behavior and if your anger is aroused, I hope it's by unrighteous behavior. And there's enough unrighteous behavior around for us to be aroused to anger, that's for sure. The problem is what we're going to do with it, what we're going to do with that anger. Make sure that you channel it in the right direction because oftentimes people do things out of anger that they shouldn't be doing. So ask God to help you in that regard. I'm not telling you there, there's not things that you ought to be mad about because there's things I'm mad about today. I'm not going to give you a list. You don't want to hear my list. It might correspond to yours. It might not. But, but there's things that uh, do rile us up, right? And uh, we just need to have the Holy Spirit reign in and allow us to move forward in the right direction on, in that regard. Just imagine with me for a moment. Parents are trying to get their kids to Jesus and somebody has the audacity to try to stop them. It's outrageous, isn't it? Forbidding children from being embraced by, I'm going to say not just Jesus, but by their Creator. How many of you know that everything that has been made has been made by Him? <laughs> That's what the Word says. And so Jesus prescribed uh, the DNA of children. He's responsible for their life. And now these disciples of Jesus say, no, you're getting in the way here. No, Jesus, they're the Almighty God in the beginning established marriage. By the way, he created male and female, and he established the first home, right? Adam and Eve. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Children were God's idea. And by the way, in, uh, I think it's Psalm 127. I got to flip there because I would probably misquote it a little bit, and I don't want to. But Psalm 127 tells us about children. It says, lo, children are the heritage of the Lord. It's verse 3. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Children are gifts truly. They are gifts from God. And that's how we view children. 
Children are a heritage from the say from the Lord. They're from the Lord. And it's the, the fruit of the womb is his reward. No, children are blessings. They're not curses. They're blessings. Gifts from God. Well, children were uh, told to stay in their lane, to stay in, you know, uh, be seen and not heard and so forth, and considered insignificant there in that culture, but they aren't to God. And that day Jesus elevated the value of the children in the eyes of everyone because children are not excluded from his grace. And every life does matter, every life. Young or old and in between, every life matters. Allow them to come, don't hinder them. And then it tells us that we should become like a child. And one of the other passages indicates it's by humility. Humble yourself as a child. But also I think it's trust. It's trust and dependence. Now Cooper, he can't take care of himself. He wouldn't last long by himself. He's got to have help. And that's one of the things that Jesus teaches us is that we need to have that kind of dependence upon him and trust for him. We must make place, we must make a place for children in the presence of Jesus.